Hi there. You're watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales here in sunny Southern California. That gentleman out there is in cloudy Newport News, Virginia. I'm David <laughs> Dinius. <laughs> And he's cloudy all the time, folks. Cloudy, yes. <laughs> uh, Dave and I have, this is interesting because normally when we do a, when we conduct a tasting with a brand, we like to get the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. It's yeah. not, it's not uncommon that often we get first the Blanco that's available and then we get the rest of the line when people see right. it, how we conduct their tastings. Well, um, <laughs> uh, we were sent um, cut water. Uh, Reposado. Now, this cut water, this this particular bottle, I've been holding on to this bottle for a year uh, <laughs> because uh, I guess at the time when I was dealing with cut water, cut water, who they are, um, the full name is cut water, Rayador uh, Tequila. And um, uh, cut water is actually a small distillery, of, uh, well, not so small, but they are a small uh, American distiller in San Diego. San Diego. Um, so they, they distill what, uh, you've seen their stuff, right? Like they got a lot of gin, yeah, gin gin and vodka and everything vodka, else, right? whiskey, uh, rum, some herbal liqueur. Yeah. So, um, and what small distillers have done in the past, and there's a, a few of them, uh, one that I can think of in LA, Isha or green bar that makes Isha tequila. Uh, they go to Mexico, uh, Charbet is another one, where they go to Mexico, they, they, they uh, hook up with a distillery, and, and, and then the head of their master distiller of, of Cutwater supervises the making of their tequila. So when they, when they, when they can import it, they can actually stand behind it because it's their style, right? So um, Jim and I had had the Blanco and loved it, but I could never get the folks at, at, at Cutwater to send us the Reposado together to both of us. Um, and and I guess they were in the process of changing over from taking uh, oh, from doing their own um, PR to getting a PR company. So the PR company reaches out to us and says, hey, we have a really great Añejo. And I said, great, send me the Reposado too. So here we are. Uh, and they, they – so – Dave and I, we're going to open a brand new bottle. I'm not even going to touch that old bottle because it's just, it wouldn't be fair. And um, I'm not Jim, so. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know. Sorry, and, Jim. <laughs> that's okay. Because Dave has nothing, he has no bar, right? There's nothing to go on on, uh, on this. It, it turns out that the PR company that, that handles Cutwater handles uh, one of the other brands as well, so. Uh, and that's how that's how Dave got mixed up in this whole thing. <laughs> so, um, okay. so God bless those PR companies, uh, KL, KGPL or something like that. I'm I'm sorry, I'm really bad with PR company names, but I do want to thank them because <laughs> there, there's a gal named Madeline. There's a couple of uh, gals that work there, a couple of ladies, really on the ball. So they sent us this, and Dave and I are going to taste it. I'm going to use my Stasso Jarrito for the ones with the wide mouth that I, I'm going to use. Yeah, the short one. Um, some of you folks who are watching us in San Diego have probably purchased or have had uh, or been to Cutwater before the you know before pandemic, uh, yeah. BC before COVID, and you and, supposedly uh, can get it at their tasting bar, I think. Yeah, um, uh, they're they're actually very popular and very big in San Diego. Um, I'm hoping that now I'm now that I'm based in Southern Cal, when when things open up, I can actually make a full visit out there. Uh, Jim has had a chance to visit a small distillery in Ohio, and he'll be uh, he'll be uh, hopefully uh, have a feature on those folks because they make a really awesome agave spirit. Uh, but in this case, this is a real pale. It um, is very well, pale, nice and shiny though. Yeah, Got well, the Blanco, like some tears. The Blanco was stellar. I got to tell you, I really enjoyed the Blanco. Uh, Jim and I really had a good time with it. Very not what I expected. Um, yeah, this has got some nice legs and tears on it. It does. It's been months, folks, since I've, I've touched that bottle and I never opened the new one. I, you know, because I'm just, sometimes I got to wait. Um, somebody, one of us has to wait because we always, <laughs> usually me. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but not the case. Usually. right? <laughs> yeah, no, but I, that's why I say the, the folks at the, um, uh, at the PR marketing, in fact, I should give them a shout out because they're really, 
they really went out of their way to get this stuff to us. Um, and I do have information on the Añejo. So when the Añejo um, is available to us, <clears throat> that would be great. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, uh, let's see. It's Madeline at. Uh, let me let me get those. Let me get those. Those. There we go. Uh, KL KLGPR. Um, and that's that's who that's who was in charge of, of getting this to us. I so appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now get us the Anijo, okay? <laughs> either to Dave or Jim, doesn't matter, okay? Doesn't matter. Either one, yeah, either one. Who, either knows? One. who, yeah. who knows? But anyway, um, it's very pale. Do, and and I, even at the beginning, at the first bottle, I never, we never got any any really info on it. So do we know how long it's aged? I'm gonna say like six months. <clears throat> now it's available year round. <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, you know, it's a it's a small distillery. Some of that stuff just, you know, they don't make all year round. I don't know. I didn't read the back label. I will. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting a, a, some really good wood notes on top of that agave that we and the agave is very familiar to me because, it, like I said, the blanco was very rich in in the in the in the cooked agave, not not baked so much. Right, but I'm not exactly sure. We'll 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 read more of the ins and outs on the label and 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 give you all the information. Are you getting a lot of alcohol on yours? Yeah, a little, a little. It's not not overpowering. I've had some that have more. It's <laughs> hopefully it's not going to be like that last brand we tried. <laughs> yeah, the horror sneaks up on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, it's kind of mellow, really. Yeah, it, well, you know, there's a lot more agave than there is wood, yeah. which, you know, I'm going to look at this and say it's probably a used barrel for six to eight months. It's just a, a minimal reposado. I mean, let's face it, this is a small distillery and they, they can't really afford to make to rest so many things that, for a long for a long period of time because they got to make money. And they so, can't afford to buy barrels all the time. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... There's a lot of green agave though. It's starting it, it, very agave forward. I, I think I think what you, we're going to find here, if I if I remember correctly, we're we're there's enough wood to round out the edges. Yeah. You know. I'm sure that's going to happen. Wow, I'm even getting some some herbal some herbs yeah, like a, like a, I want to say like a rosemary or something. And I'm getting like a hint of. Vanilla, almost. Just That's got to be from the barrel. Hint. Yeah. Wow, there's all kinds of things going on in this thing. And there is. I'm, I'm using the Stasol Jarita with the wider mouth that traditionally we use for mezcal. That's the same I'm using. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of herb right in the center. I want to say, I want to say it's like basil or rosemary, something like that, and it's even mixed with a little mint. Just, just that yeah, touch. I can get a little of the mint, a little of the mint, a little of yeah. the vanilla, a little oak, a little agave. Okay. Well, I'm I'm willing to dive in if you are. So yep. you know, just right. brace yourself. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Mm. Add that warmth up front. And then it slowly trickled down the back. Mm. This is kind of more of what we're used to. Mm -hmm. the, the previous the previous Blanco we just did, the previous tasting was was uh, Espero. Yep. And it snuck up on us. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we were ready for that. This was reacting more of what we're used to, right? Sweet yes. on the intake. There's an explosion at mid palate, probably a little bit from the agave, some from the barrel, and then and then you know maybe even more on the back end. And this finish is a bit longer. It is a bit longer. Mine seems to be kind of a little more front to mid. Okay, well, you what in the uh, in the explosion of pepper? You mean? Yeah, with the taste. Did you, you didn't get an initial sweetness then at the beginning. Let's try it again, shall we? <laughs> mm. 
I got some of the the barrel. Yeah, me too. The dryness from the barrel. I got some of that. Yeah, yeah. A little it's, bit of the, the pepper up front, but not a big burst of it like like the sparrow that we did. Yeah. No, and, and as I recall correctly, the Blanco didn't have that that hot pepper. It was more of the crescendo that I that I mentioned when we did the sparrow. And and by the way, those are two unrelated brands, okay? They're but it's just this one's reacting more of what we're used to. Yes. When we talk about and and it's not a bad thing. This is good. This is this repo is good. I think I think it's, it's particularly um, because it's a repo. I think it enhance it. It really would hang in there with your traditional cocktails like a Paloma, Margarita. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know whether you're using juice or soda, even a tequila soda. I think I think there's enough. <laughs> you know there's enough punch in there for that. It should it should hold up pretty good. Wow. Do we have any pricing on this thing? Uh, supposedly you can get it at Reserve Bar. <clears throat> it looks like 40 bucks. Wow. And I can get it shipped to Virginia. <laughs> wow. Well, oh my gosh, that's really, that's really tasty. Mm-hmm. That's tasty. I, I completely, you know, it's been months, folks, when you're when you're dealing with these tequila brands that we do so many of them, that sometimes there's no, there's, the only time you have to revisit it, at least in my case, is by, at year of end when we do Brands of Promise. Yeah. Uh, and, and Dave will tell you, you know, that last year we were, we were swamped. Uh, all the guys had had more tequila than they knew what to do with. And <laughs> So I, I hadn't, well, I mean, you know, I hadn't really revisited this since even before I left San Antonio, which was like in uh, September of 2020. So I, you know, I carried it with me, but I'm, I'm really liking this. I, in fact, I like this batch more than I did the original one. And I, I, I think t the, there was a point where I was, I had, as you can tell with the original version, the one I had originally, and uh, I'm not even sure if it's the same batch. Uh, toward the end, toward down here, I thought that there was more wood, and maybe it was just settling. Maybe uh, more than more than I cared for. But but this isn't the case now. This this new batch, this new bottle uh, <laughs> that I that we just opened, it's it's good stuff, man. Oh, it is aged in the Cutwater whiskey barrels. Well, that makes so more sense. Their whiskey barrels down to Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Well, age. a lot of the uh, we. J I just got done doing a, a agave spirits around the world uh, leg. Uh, if you're if you're subscribing to our magazine, you're getting it for free. <laughs> uh, you get the, the download the PDF version, and uh, in we're taping this in February, so I, it could be March by the time you see this. But get the February issue because we cover agave spirits in the United States. And there's so many of them that are that are doing what Cutwater does um, with either agave syrup, or they go to Mexico and do their own. But tr but if they're if they if they have their own barrels, that's what they're aging it in. So that way, each micro distiller throughout the United States has their own stamp on their version of an agave spirit or a tequila. So it really makes sense to me, you know that. So so it. And I gotta tell you, when I go down there, and I will one day when we can, <laughs> we can all travel. Um, I'm, I'd love, I'd love to, you know, get some of their bourbon because, you know, these small batch distillers throughout yeah. the U.S. their bourbons and whiskeys. That's that's their bread and butter, man. Yeah, uh, and I've been kind of sampling some bourbons here lately, and it's surprising how the flavors kind of are similar but they're not quite similar yeah it yeah that's kind of opened my eyes a little bit well you guys you you jim and of course eric um they you know they, they're they're more familiar with the whiskeys and bourbons whereas me it's strictly a guy with spirits until recently 
Uh, of course, I, I lived in Texas for a while, so that was that's bourbon country. So there's no way you can avoid it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't have the the expansive knowledge that you guys that you guys do, and, and you live now in bourbon country. I mean, that's where you live now. Yeah, so. pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. And and so and uh, and and Jim is a big Scotch and whiskey guy. So <laughs> yeah, I'd love to just to be on the fly of the wall and listen to you three guys talk about that stuff because I. I know a little, not a whole lot. Just to get <laughs> I know you. a little. That's about it. Yeah. So what I do you want think? to learn more. They're, I want to visit some of the distilleries around here and actually. Yeah, I, I mean, some of them are are they're, they're they are doing tours, but uh, it just you're going to have to check on you know in your own state and see where they're open and, and at what capacity, and of course mask up, be safe because yeah. because nobody wants to get sick, and you know we want to be able to go visit. You know, in a because it's more fun in a crowd instead of just one or two or three. And uh, some of these, some of these small distillers have restaurants that they've had to shut down. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it does say online here that it's uh, harvested the blue agaves harvested in Jalisco, it's slow cooked in traditional brick oven. Really? Open, open fermented. Oh, no kidding. And double distilled in traditional alambic stills made of stainless and copper. That that's interesting. That and that's for all of the, all of their varietals, or just uh, just. It's at least the reposado. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 what I have in front of me is the the uh, information for the añejo, which I, 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 right now is not worth reading, obviously, but it does say. That uh, Cutwater Rayador, um, the the their master distiller, and they they give a name. I want to. Uh, it says Cherny, um, and I want to get a full name here. So bear with me as I as I try to read this. Uh, it is Gnome One Ten or Eleven Ten. Eleven Ten. And uh, what comes out of there? Do we know what comes out? What other brands come? Yeah, out there? we can find something. Let's see here. Grand Orendane. Oh, it's at the Orendane Distillery. Ah, okay. I've yep. had Grand Orendane. That's amazing stuff. They're one of the, they're they're one of the old uh, tequila making families. Depending on, oh, uh, it's Yusuf Cherny, is the acclaimed spirits. Uh, is the acclaimed. Uh, Let's see. Uh, okay, he's the co-founder and master distiller. I would assume that he's also handling the Reposado and and the Blanco. So, Probably. so yeah. So it makes it makes sense to me now um, that that they would rest these in in their own barrels uh, under his you know supervision, and uh, so you get a consistent flavor profile that's re that's suggestive of cut water. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it did say for their the Blanco that it was made the same way, just it wasn't aged in the barrels, of course. So, hey, uh, I you know we we loved the Blanco. It was a brand of promise nominee, and and I think performed really really well uh, in in the brands of promise. But I got to go. I think you'll agree with me right here. Brand of promise nominee, <laughs> mine. <laughs> that's Dave's. That's Dave's paddle. Brand of Promise nominee out. in the Reposado category. And it really does, you know what? It really does have that old school um, flavor to it, which I, I, I'm i really I'm really digging it. And so what you're looking at again is Cutwater, cut water, Rayador. Rayador. Okay, and that's a, their Reposado tequila. Um, and I guess it is available everywhere. They must have the wider distribution. So um, it, that's there's good. There's a few states that you can get it from uh, at... Uh... Uh, who was that? Uh, wine bar? Wine, uh, reserve bar. Reserve bar. Yeah. Reserve bar. Oh, cool. That's great. Um, that's, a, that's a feather in their cap because a lot of uh, small batch distillers uh, don't have that wide distribution, you know, and it's really good to see. And it's, it's great stuff. Um, uh, did, you, did you mention a price on that too? Uh, $40. I, you know what? I think it's worth it. Not thirty nine ninety nine, forty dollars. No, it's forty dollars. <laughs> um, you might be able to find it, you know, a couple bucks cheaper. 
but yes. it's, it's okay. It's all right. Remember, they're a small batch distiller. They probably don't make a whole lot of this, but it, but they do have the, the a decent distribution so far. So, hey, I say go get it. It's nice. Hey, yeah, I nothing wrong with that. I think it's a great cocktail forward. And uh, now that we know the process that it is that it is baked in brick ovens. And that makes more sense because I didn't I didn't put the two of them together. I had not had a chance to see to go back and scope out the distillery numb. And uh, that's the Orange Dine family. Those guys uh, those guys install more more brick ovens. They don't <laughs> they, they do. They took they uh, one of those one of their one of their distilleries. They have they own like two or three. One of them actually removed autoclaves and installed the the brick ovens. So uh, hey, excellent. Yes, I think that's really a great idea. But that's yes. our take on Cutwater Rayador Reposado. Go find it. Go get it. I think you guys are going to be really, really happy with it. It's a, uh, you know, once we get through and out of out from under this whole thing, we all get our shots. We're going to take this to a barbecue <laughs> and, and have some shots. That's it. And that's our take on that particular tequila cutwater, Rayador Reposado. Thanks again to Madeline and all the, the, the ladies that work at that yes. PR company for making that happen. Uh, but that, I'm Mike Morales here in Southern California. That gentleman out there is... Not cloudy. I'm Dave Dinius. <laughs> Newport News, Virginia. He's one of the seven dwarfs, folks. Cloudy. <laughs> I think I think they're on the floor somewhere. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, you've been listening and watching the Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels and networks. Please subscribe to us if you're watching us on YouTube. Thumbs up. Uh, yeah, hit, give us a thumbs up. Let give us know if you had this. Yeah, leave us some comments. Don't forget to uh, hit the notification bell also, so that way every time we upload a video, your phone goes bananas. And yep. what, whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely.